Um, I would like to um, uh, introduce you our expert, which is uh, Christian Vatier. And um, so if Christian, can you uh, turn on the camera so we can see you? I thought my camera was there all along. Um, yeah, yeah. Is it? Was it there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. it's, <laughs> it's quite frightful to see myself so close to, you know. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, good to see you, and I also would like to introduce you to Jana, who is um, the main coordinator, and uh, she will um, to go through through the talk. So, uh, maybe if uh, uh, if Jana will start with a brief introduction, and then we can uh, we'll go to your uh, to your stories. Okay. Christian Fatier is a unique person in our pool of experts because he's not Czech and he's not Slovak either. And he went with the Czech office on two missions, as far as I know. And that was in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2020 mm -hmm. and in Ethiopia in 2021. So we're looking forward to you telling us more about it and also explaining how you ended up going with our office. Uh, very much so. You know, I was, uh, but first of all, thank you all uh, very much for uh, interesting me to, uh, to be part of this event tonight and tell you all about uh, what has been a um, unique uh, experience. But I want to use words which are mine rather than, you know, uh, 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 words that everybody can understand, but I want those to be very, very powerful. I am a French uh, native. I was born in France. Uh, 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 back in the 70s, and I grew up in France, but then emigrated to uh, the UK, and I spent uh, over 22 years um, uh, in London. And if you ask me what would be the genesis of ending up in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo in Salamabila was actually Buckingham Palace, where I actually started to work uh, when I graduated from university. Um, after all these years in, in London, I landed in Prague by pure chance without having ever been uh, in Prague and, and fell in love with the city and got on with work. And then one of these uh, out of the blue surprise, the sort of belief that you would have that it's coming to you for a purpose. Why on earth did I find that email one day that would have something that came to my eyes straight? As far as I find it difficult to read in Czech, when it's written in French, it comes to my eyes very, very quick. And le cagis bez ranik, the equivalent, the beautiful equivalent of Médecins Sans Frontières was definitely something which was appealing. And um, I, I want to spend two minutes to tell you how it really felt on that, I think it was the 13th of November, 2019, um, when there was an open uh, evening in the, uh, in the office here in Palmovka in uh, Prague, uh, I think it's Prague 8, Prague 8, I think, yes, it is Prague 8. And I met, uh, th that this is the very first evening where I met some of the guys from MSF. I remember vaguely a guy who was telling us about how experience, I remember more about how he was expressing what, you know, uh, uh, led him to, to do, uh, to go on missions. And, and it, it took, for me, it had an impact from the very first evening. And I was thinking over the past days, how I would present what this experience has been and what it really was, before, whilst, and then coming back. And I can but that, and will always do, for the, uh, uh, the depth of interest and um, guidance that I have had all along, not just when I was uh, in the field, but from, I, I believe, so the, from the very first evening when I met with um, a Médecins Sans Frontières and the perspectives of, you know, Am I fit enough? Can I do that sort of role? Have, have I got the personality to do that? Am I the person who's going to be physically fit to do so? Will I ever be prepared enough to not be prepared to go somewhere and think on my feet at some point, but be wise enough? Um, 
And all of that took some time, a lot of meetings back and forth. Um, and I, I have to admit, it's you know the familiar faces that the faces that became familiar in the uh, in um, uh, in the Prague office were very much for me important because I wanted those guys to not just entrust me to go on a mission, but to get to know me and get to know how I would picture. I mean, what was interesting is that I was being recruited. I was being guided through by people who actually knew what they were um, not talking about, but what they had experienced themselves. And I feel very much that, um, and, and if there is any, anyone who would be in that positions of, of, of venturing, that you can never be prepared really, but you can prepare other aspects in the thinking of how you would approach. I mean, I'm now back in cooperation and I've been in corporations all my life and um, it doesn't have the same way uh, and we don't deal with the same people and, and you know, things are different, but we want also to bring those people. And that was perhaps, and I will get to that in, at, at some point, that was one of the, cherries on the many, many cakes, virtual cakes I had there to be able to witness how people over there, the, the, you know, the, the, the local people would get this information and grow with it. It wasn't just, um, it wasn't restricted to anything that experience, it was really keeping an open uh, you know, we had to get on with the business, with the project, uh, which at the time in, in Salamabila in, in DRC, which was an emergency project, struck coming on going. So I was in between. It was my very first mission and I felt very intimidated and probably intimidated by the fact that I wanted to, you know, be withdrawn and then be very active to support and really be um, a team. I know these days we always encourage people to, you know, be inclusive and we always talk about teams. But if there is one experience that felt very much like I have a team and I need to be a team member and a contributor was, was MSF, especially when you're in the field and, you know, some, some moments are hard and you never actually capture them as being hard at the moment you leave or you go through them. I felt very much that I never understood what I was going through until I came back and I was very satisfied and very pleased and very overwhelmed by it all um, but I, I do wish and I don't need to know but it felt very much before I, I when I was getting ready to go on you know from the moment I was being interviewed um, to the moment I was being prepared to go it, it was very much a personal aspect uh, being born in the 70s in France, Médecins Sans Frontières, and, and, and the involvement, and I, I, I dare say, you know, culturally, we would see and we would recognize the logo because we would have it all the time, especially when, when there were campaigns or there were um, uh, news on TV that I would not understand when I was a kid, uh, makes more sense nowadays. Um, but it felt very much like, okay, you know, I don't know how you guys have felt in, in through your careers, but it was just, okay, I, I wasn't chosen, I was interested, I went and I told them, this is who I am and this is what I can do. And what I can't do, I will teach it to you because I will grow with it. Um, and I will just give you the energy that I have and make sure that I can sustain that energy. And, and again, together align with the team and, and the security aspects. We don't go to places. I'm always fascinated when people tell me, oh, where are you going? Why are you going there? And I'm just like, c'est Médecins Sans Frontières. Médecins Sans Frontières is never going to be like Club Med. We don't have the same sky, perhaps, but we have the conditions. But the wealth of, of experience is definitely there. Again, uh, it, it might be interesting because I'm a French native and I've lived uh, mostly abroad. Um, and, and for me, it was very important to be able to contribute in that aspect. And it was wonderful to, uh, to, to get to be with those people. I had been to Africa many times on a personal basis and I had been trekking around. Um, and the, uh, the Congolese are an incredible, incredible breed of people. They... Um, they they make me emotional and i do miss them and i get to hear from them on a regular basis and i cherish them they have i have had the most amazing experience where i was able for uh, i think
think it was five adults in very specific conditions, which I wasn't aware of because this was my very first mission and COVID had just started. So I didn't know what it was to be before COVID. And that's my beautiful office. I, um, I had a wonderful person working with me by the name of uh, Patrice. And uh, Patrice was from, uh, is from Congo, from Bukavu. And uh, the, the, the connection and the hard work and the willingness to go along and take the slap when there were slaps to be taken and understanding what should not even be conceived. Um, I don't want to be grim. I don't want things to be um, uh, dark. I want things to be happy when I talk about them. But reality has it, and we are all witnessing this today. Um, some behaviors, some, some actions do have an impact on other people. And we did find ourselves in the situations where in the context in Salamabila, we were literally giving opportunities to people who would have been left pretty much with absolutely no opportunities. And then dealing with um, cultural, psychological, you know, we were taking, I was always taking, you know, a person at a time. And, and as you see, that picture is taken from the door of that office and that door was always open. The rule was that I knew exactly what I had to do to comply with the, the, the position itself as an HR manager um, and, and finance. Did struggle with the finance though, but that's when the team um, aspect kicked in because I felt supported on that aspect. Um, but getting to implement a project that was an emergency project to make it on sorry to make it ongoing and try to source people to do some work here and project here but you know choose the people who would be the most relevant and give opportunities for other people to build their i, I wasn't gonna i, I wouldn't just say self-esteem but perhaps what i think would be the belief that there is a life after a trauma there is Understanding what you're going through doesn't make you feel better, doesn't heal you necessarily, but it does give you a perspective where you can just, you know, hope for something that's going to make you progress. And I felt very uh, overwhelmed uh, because I was looking after, you know, I had in my team uh, an assistant, uh, two ladies who were dealing with the facilities on the compounds and, and uh, a cook, but I was also dealing with daily workers, uh, let them be uh, uh, ladies who would come and cook or uh, uh, do whatever ladies could do and then people who were stronger to do other things so, i mean we would choose ladies who would be strong enough to do what would be considered only to be done by uh, by male uh, workers who would have the strength because they are incredibly strong but what it felt was that we were not just you know you are aware that a days of work is money and, and, and whatever is involved behind, you don't want to know or to think too much about it. Uh, I still have that T-shirt. And, and just so that you know, that T-shirt was the only T-shirt with uh, Le Kaji Bezranik. So I knew if anybody was going to wear my T-shirt because all of the others were French or English. Um, but it was just the understanding of you know, what it would do to actually uh, use those people and, and give them those opportunity to actually grow. And when I was telling you early on, you know, we are so privileged, so incredibly gifted and lucky to have all of these um, information and access. Um, I was given the opportunity whilst um, I was in Salamabila to uh, organize some workshop uh, together with other members of um, uh, MSF globally based who would kindly support and give us the material and talk people through with concepts that you know, perhaps they had never been exposed to before, like, you know, how do we behave with our other, uh, fellow workers? How do we behave in, 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 a, in a working society? And making people think about, you know, uh, things that, you know, would be um, perhaps not even noticed and completely and utterly outrageous from an European point of view, but you, don't, you know, you don't point this like that. What was interesting was the openness of, pale, of people and the trust that they would have for you to guide them through whatever knowledge you had and you could be willing and be willing to give to them. Um, and I remember because this was an emergency project in Salamabila, we um, we were working six uh, we were working on Saturdays, um, and and I felt very much that you know I could have a balance again because the circumstances were quite 
peculiar um, because what you're seeing here is, is, is part of the base, but you actually do spend months, weeks and months on end without actually getting out because of, uh, of uh, the security in, uh, uh, at the time, but also because of COVID. Um, so I would, you know, uh, I would be interested as well. And, and, and I was given the opportunity to be given some equipment and teach those um, French, colonial French, Belgium speaking people. I thought I would teach them some English. And, you know, when you have the attention of people, uh, and I've never had this attention anywhere else, it would make it so that not only we were all aiming to do the job, and, and it was wonderful when we had some good news coming from the hospital, and uh, these were the beautiful stories. And they would also come, unfortunately, with some other stories where, you know, we were trying to be more discreet about, but um, the level of empathy that we would all have naturally, you you still remain focused. And the reason why I'm I'm sneaking that um, in in passing is probably because of what I think. Um, I was glad not to know before I left, not because I was missing out on something, not not because ignorance is bliss, um, but simply because I was perhaps given the best opportunity to be prepared to go somewhere and leave that experience as my own experience. Um, and, you know, knowing why you're going somewhere and how you're going to be proceeding with the tasks and how you should be reporting accordingly, because reporting is literally all the time. And you understand why, and it gives it the value. You know, I have some, I have an elderly friend friend in New York who's been uh, uh, giving to uh, Doctors Without Borders and it was somehow from the moment you would receive the, 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 the mail in her living room and then the stickers that she would get to, you know, the labels that she would have. And then suddenly you, you end up and you think, well, I'm, I'm at the very tail end and this is what you're doing and, you know, you're giving and I'm giving just as much, but to be able to see the results and, you know, when it involves people getting better or being saved, um, nothing can buy you that. And, and that's what I say, you never get, this is what I think, you never get prepared for, for, for the joy or the sadness. You never, never get prepared for how you're going to, um, to live through that experience. Um, and, and perhaps it's, it's, it's perhaps a, a good thing not to be um, simply because you, you, you know, you're venturing there and you're learning way more from them that, uh, I mean, perhaps I'm, I'm, I'm being too humble, but I have learned a great deal because it was in a way for me very easy to understand what I needed to be accountable for as far as my work is, was concerned and the different aspects of recruiting people in the field rather than going through a recruiting campaign in Europe, like I would be uh, more accustomed with. But, you know, there's a difference between translating and transcreating. And, you know, the colonial Belgium French is something that amused me tremendously because I thought it was very interesting to see how we differ, but, and sometimes misunderstand each other. They would understand me more than I would understand them. But it was also very, um, incredible how um, I always think that the people aren't aware of the most generally I always think that the people aren't aware of their, their strongest uh, features their strongest uh, traits of character um, I'm becoming speechless because the, 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 this, these are aspects that I'm not sharing with anyone. I, I felt very, uh, when, I, when I came back and, and still now, there are things that I want not to necessarily keep for myself, but I, I tend to think that those you nurture and, and, and you reflect upon them. And I can assure you that, um, especially Salam Abila has left, you know, some people get tattoos or they get scouted or whatever. They've left something that doesn't show uh, when you look at me and though I look help better than on that picture, but they have changed me. Um, and I, I'm sure people with way more experience behind their belt would, would 
perhaps agree or maybe they would defer and and tell me you know because uh, people were aware that I was a first on, on a first mission and sometimes people tend to, to give you some guidance and, and give you some stories and, and give you tips about you know how you should protect yourself protect your others and how you should approach um, your stress your adrenaline and all this um, I don't know if I've done it right I don't know if you can ever be prepared for that aspect but um, it's it's definitely if I was to talk to someone, and I remember the chap that I met here in uh, in Prague when there was that evening, and that guy was a logistician, and he had been doing some work in in Iraq, I think back in the days. Um, there is going to be five people between the logisticians or an HR admin or a NAM or whoever, and I think the the difference in people is really um, making you know the, the if we're talking about a wall that is standing those differences of people make the the war a much stronger one that you would anticipate and I, i'm i'm telling you this without going into too much details when some evenings were difficult and the climate was quite uh, tense um, you know we all deal with being you know uh, being tired being stressed out being anxious being depressed whatever you're going through we all deal with it in, in, in our very personal manner. Uh, getting back to this team uh, concept, over there it was very different because you, without realizing, were looking and, and watching people. And I, I had my moments where it was hard. And I know that I was always surrounded. But it, what was amazing is that this we were not just doing our tasks. We were not just reporting on what we were doing and counting the days perhaps sometimes before we would have a break. Um, it was very much not just the field coordinator, but pretty much in that experience, it was everybody was looking at everybody and they would know, you know, how people would need either the space or the support. You know, I even had, you know, I, I wouldn't spend much time with him during the day because I didn't have the time, but I had a wonderful man. He was, he was a cook uh, for, for our house. And, um, you know, they felt very intimidated, which perhaps was the most difficult part for me. I don't like here or, or there. I don't like people being intimidating by me. I like to think that people can be intimidated, but that's not what I really want to aim for when it comes to work and, and the value of having a, a position over there as opposed to having a position here in Europe. Um, and when you, you know, when you witness someone is quite timorous and is coming up to you and they just want to ask you, you know, I have prepared some food for you because I realize that you don't eat enough. Or I tend to stop eating when I feel like uh, I feel tense. But that wasn't just proving. It was just very quietly, very discreetly being able to say hey i know you're going through a tough time and you know in in we were a team of seven uh, seven uh, if i remember well and it, it was also interesting to witness it on other people and then kind of like you know show that you were there and 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 you could support if if need be now i don't know if i want to share that secret with you um i'll do it um I think the most difficult uh, uh, for me, the, uh, because they have, you have to acknowledge that some aspects are difficult, I think, and difficult doesn't make it in, impossible. But I have an absolute, believe it or not, I have an absolute phobia of rodents. And um, I've never, I've never screamed so much. And despite all that, it again, it was an example of people asking, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to go and venture there? Because if it's for traveling, no, we're not going there for travel. That's, that's like working as a holiday rep and end up in every corner, but not seeing anything but the resort. Um, and it's interesting because anyone who would know of Médecins Sans Frontières, be a donator or not, um, would be very intrigued to understand why knowing me, someone like me who is not a medical person would end up there. And what was interesting is that I did spend a great deal of time, you know, when, you were when I was traveling around back and forth to, uh, I'm talking about my folks in general, to explain to people that no, I am I'm not a medical person. I don't think I could face even cutting a finger, but it's, it's really the logistics of it all and, and the organigram and all of these people who are involved you know, you, 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 you're looking at a map, but it's like, a, you know, an incredible, very intricate uh, cobweb. And in that cobweb, there was room uh, 
for people like me to grow to really and i strongly believe that to grow and then be a contributor um and and it was interesting also because i felt very much that suddenly those people were happy to be uh the contributors financially were also very happy to understand a bit more of you know from the person that they would know personally they would know what exactly it meant towards the very end and i must confess I had never questioned myself on that one before. Um, and for me, it was very much trying to be and remain humble all the way through because you don't want to be presenting and you do not want people to, I mean, I didn't want people to welcome me back in December and feel like, hey, wow, hero, you've done great. No, you, none of that. All I wanted was to eat and then go back because that's how it feels. It felt very much difficult for me to adjust. Um, you get prepared to go. But I never thought about getting prepared to come back. You always think it's a given to come back to uh, what you're accustomed to, um, and and that that was um, that was painful in a way where you accept. I often think that if you do miss people and if you hurt for whatever reasons when people go uh, and, and disappear, it really means that you know something is good. Pain has to be also um, uh, a way of expressing how happy gifted you are to actually come across some amazing people and um and connect with them but genuinely connect with them and and that's very much i how i felt we we connected in that environment and you know it wasn't about oh what can you bring me or what can you, it was really about hey we've got all the job let's work together and and and, and let's do the best part of it i haven't had a chance yet to meet many um um, expats and I'm very intrigued because it was the expats who gave me you know the, the, that desire to go there and it was the Prague office who I salute and adore who literally took care of me all along but not just when I was in the field they took care of me um, I must confess I didn't show up one day for an interview because I slept in and I was honest enough to tell um, uh, Pavla at the time I slept in but they never gave up I mean perhaps other people would have given up on me but um, I felt very humbled to be trusted to do something when I didn't know where I was going at or what I was exposing myself to and um if I can share a secret wish, um, I would very much want to experience this again. And I do hope uh, to, to remain fit enough and long enough to, uh, to be able to do that. Uh, I'm wondering, in terms of time, I can talk forever, but I was I, I did make a list of, you know, giving you a quick of my background. My background is that I'm a linguist. I, uh, I'm supposed to be a teacher and I never did that. So becoming uh, an HR admin um, was literally in London by pure chance i worked from buckingham palace i ended up in the city and progressively ended up in hr and that's why i was actually um, uh, quite happy to learn from those uh, hr practices in the field because they're rather different from the one that i have but being able to uh, to implement some work um, some workshop sessions was was really one of the best aspects where you could just witness how people would be so enthusiastic you know there would be people with i would get bored with powerpoint slides they would get enthusiastic because it would trigger some thoughts and it would uh, you know you would look at this from from afar but thinking oh, well those subjects are they're very much um uh, of of um, of uh, actuality in france and and there's something very pleasing perhaps it's you can't share this with them but there's something very pleasing when you make people feel that they've done something they've achieved something and they've progressed um, the sense of pride for those local uh, i think it's it's not a nice way of putting it I'll, I'll rephrase that the sense of pride and dignity of the people i have come across in their country on their land with their cultures religions and what have you uh, uh, never cease to inspire me and even to this day yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, um, but since you asked about time, we are uh, running a little bit over time for I the presentation you. part. I but thought. thanks for sharing your background. My really very pleasure. And very you pleasure. can go through the rest of your pictures, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about the emergency project, just so that we have an idea what was the project about, and then we can open up the floor to questions. Okay.
yeah uh, that picture specifically here i uh, we had no running water we had no washing machines and i had two cleaning ladies who were cleaning everybody's stuff including their shoes and i would refuse anyone to touch my staff because i wanted to do it by myself and if i could spare them from doing the work then it was like a therapy on sunday so this is a sunday picture um salam abila uh, very much affected by violence sexual violence um and violence to the civilian um was as i said uh, an emergency project now i must remember not to get confused in time i ended up in salamabila in july june july 2020 and i think uh, if memory serves me right they started the project uh, the year before around november and then it, it, it went down and then they came back to it and then it became stronger. And then from the moment I was there, budgets were located and the, uh, the, uh, the project became an ongoing project. And before I left, they would make the, uh, the base a bigger base. Um, there's a, the, 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 one of the main tasks, uh, which was an important one for me was uh, the uh, hospital and uh, the, um, uh, the catering at the hospital. So there would be different health center and the guys would go and explore or go to those centers. Um, you know, you, you, one of the questions that I had was like, did I use map personally? I did not. But the guys, the field coordinator and so on were using maps and they were using tools. Um, and how do I know this? Simply because I would see them, uh, not for my personal use, but because, you know, I was mentioning that we had the weekly and the monthly reports and that's how they would report accordingly. And now I don't know why I'm, oh, this is one of the days from the airports. We, um, Salam Abila is about 45 minutes, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a 45 minutes journey from, from uh, Namoye, uh, which is another uh, little distance from Bukavu. And I, uh, I, I'm sorry, I was not able to give you so many pictures, but I didn't go there uh, for pictures. And in my mind, I, I would only take pictures that, uh, I don't know, they talked to me. And, and that picture, for instance, was uh, my last trip back. And it felt very much that, I don't know, it felt like I was a different person. My skin was different from what it was uh, six months before. I felt tired, I felt skinny, but I felt like I had achieved something and, and again, very overwhelmed. And those pictures talk to me even today. Uh, and if I may, I will share this with you, which was given to me uh, by the, um, by the uh, le chef, uh, the field coordinator in charge. And this was from Bukavu. And this uh, magnificent lady, this incredible lady, Tata, was, um, you know, when we're talking about people and how they could get to know you without even talking to you and express uh, their empathy or their kindness without even talking to you. This was a typical example of a lady uh, with a quite difficult background, um, but still amazing. And, and it's inspiring. I'm always inspired by people who get up in the morning and work. This one would work. She would get up in the morning, but she would have the smile with it. Um, and she would also go into my room when there was a rat, which made me fail to like I was really looked after. So an amazing time with her. Okay, I'm done with the pictures. Shall we open up the floor to questions here? Is that okay with you? Uh, otevřeme uh, otázkám a můžete uh, si zapnout mikrofon, ale prosím zvedněte ruku, jestli máte otázku, pokud by bylo víc lidí. A buď můžete česky nebo slovensky a já to přeložím, nebo rovnou anglicky, jak vám je to pohodlné. Please uh, raise the hand if you have a question and turn on your mic um, or write it in the chat. And I'll check if we have any questions to Christian in the chat. I think we just have questions on mapping. If I may question, Christian, Bonjour. thank you very much uh, for your story. It Bonjour. was uh, very interesting for me. And uh, you said that uh, you don't use maps, really? For the, for the purpose of the HR admin role, uh, I didn't need to use the maps because, and this is one of the, I want to tell you these guys, um, 
each and everybody's opportunity will be very different. And because of the COVID context, um, I literally spent all that time and never even had the opportunity to explore just once. The beauty of it is that the guys are very inclusive even when they get out and they obviously want the admin uh, field manager to know, you know what's going on. Uh, there was no, on, on the two missions that I was sent to, unfortunately, there was no opportunity to do so. And when I say um, that, uh, uh, you know, people were using maps and I wasn't, it was really in the reporting aspect. So no, I, I was not using maps. Have you ever uh, used uh, mapping uh, into OpenStreetMap? I have no idea. No, I've never done any of that. Uh, I, I, I assure you that this, this map pattern was also very interesting for me because I thought, well, I have no idea, but uh, yeah. I know that I've seen things, but no, I, um, I did not. And what would be interesting would this be to go evening, back. This evening is opportunity to start uh, like a beginner. Absolutely. Looking. I agree. I absolutely agree. Yeah. And um, no, no, yes, by all means. We have prepared a special uh, room for English beginners uh, to use the uh, ID editor. So uh, uh, please uh, stay uh, connect uh -huh. and you can uh, uh, try. So, Absolutely. So, so thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. If you also see the other side of it, how volunteers are supporting and giving their time. Um, does anyone else have a question? Feel free to turn on your camera and your microphone. Do you know when I was talking about reporting, guys, I mean, I'm showing this to you, but this is very personal. I do write journals in general, um, and I didn't have much time to write in generals. Uh, what I want to say is that each and every members will be reporting accordingly to uh, what I would say the head office or what we would call the capital. What was interesting is that in the first place, I, I, I did struggle with the fact that I was spending a great deal of time reporting, and I felt very much like reporting was taking time on the actions. And then I decided not to be uh, uh, stubborn like I can be sometime and get on with it. And I'm, sometimes I get on with things that I don't want to do and I don't like to do because I believe with experience, though I'm very young, uh, that it comes to you, the understanding of why you're doing this or why if it's implemented that way to do so. Um, and I used to get very anxious because every uh, every Friday, for instance, and I will just show you vaguely, every Friday I would have to send um, that uh, little email that would say, okay, this is what happened in San Amabila from the HR fin uh, office so that you have uh, the knowledge. Um, and I, you know, it, it wouldn't click quite and I used to think, okay, well, that's my Friday task, I expedite. Then I realized how important, how crucially important it was for my job to be able to report accordingly so that I could go back if there was any discrepancies or if there was anything that was uh, to be investigated. Um, but also, you know, other people have made me realize how important it was. You know, wouldn't you want to know if you're giving something that is going to be used accordingly, properly? I mean, it's satisfying enough to be able to give, but if you have the assurance that what you're giving is not just going down the sink, I think it, it, it makes a great deal of difference. I'm not saying that the reporting is for that sole purpose, by all means, no. Um, I was, you know, very aware of my positions and my ambitions were around these positions. And I was very clear. I think it was very important for me to know where I stood and what was it be expected for me so that I could align and people could trust and rely that I was not playing the game, but doing the right thing. One thing that I will say very quickly, just perhaps I don't want to change the mood, when you're in a situation where security is, 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 could be an issue, um, and I won't go into details as far as Ethiopia is concerned, uh, Médecins Sans Frontières was there at the beginning, whilst I was there. Prague was there for me uh, when I was in the field reaching out. I have been overwhelmed by the fact that I was just one person at of you know, a big community of people around. And I had people and I still have people to this day. It's, I've never experienced this before. And I just want to give as much as I have received because I don't think I was prepared to receive so much. And, and it made that human experience together with the, the local people, but also my folks and also, you know, being in a strange situations with, with Prague, which is, you know, um, 
special for me. Um, again, going back to this team experience, uh, amazing experience. I, it's, it's, I don't have the words and perhaps I don't need to have any words. Sorry, I'll be quiet now. But um, uh, no, I'm, I'm here to, as a testimony of that personal uh, feeling as well. And that's very much what I got from the guy who I don't remember the name of who I met the very first evening together with Pavla, uh, because I could see that there was not just that achievement, you know, we can all achieve things, but it wasn't an achievement for the purpose, it was really something personal. I can done. only guess, Christian, that it was Daniel Miller. It's a legislation. Maybe. Somebody used to speak, and he, he was also at one of our marathons in Prague. Oh, well, there you are. There you are. Okay. Thanks so much for sharing how it's there like and making us feel it with you. Uh, this was more personal than some other talks I've been to and gave me goosebumps at least once. Oh, you're sweet. Now I'm getting the goosebumps. <laughs> Thank you. It looks like uh, people are eager to start mapping. So I think we can add, uh, end this part here, but if you stay along, of course, yeah. participants feel welcome to, to chat with Christian along the way. Over to you, Mila. Thank you very much, uh, Christian and uh, Janka for presentations about the mission.